Jesus name now um like I said I'm going to be doing a teaching on the fullness of the Spirit the fullness of the Spirit the fullness of the Spirit refers to the complete manifestation of the Holy Ghost hallelujah the manifestations of the Holy Spirit is the work of the Holy Ghost at work in the life of a person how the Holy Ghost manifests himself in the life of a believer because we know that the Holy Ghost cannot occupy an unbeliever the Holy Ghost is here for believers even though he initiated the born-again experience but he cannot find expression in the life of a man except that man is saved because it is when you receive Jesus into your life that you are able to receive his spirit hallelujah and I'll be talking about the fullness of the spirit can you give me Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 there was something Paul mentioned in this scripture. Ephesians 5.18, he says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is essence, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, there was something that happened. When Jesus, when, 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 when Jesus was on earth, we noticed that Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus walked in the fullness of the Spirit. Right? And I said something earlier. I said you cannot receive the Holy Ghost into your life except you are a born-again Christian. And now, when, when we receive the Holy Ghost on, on the day of baptism, remember Jesus did not receive, you know, you know, we said that the ways you can receive the Holy Ghost is when hands are laid on you. It's scriptural. We saw it in the verses. Hands can be laid on you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you can also ask God in prayer in Luke chapter 11, verse 11 to 13, where he says, how many of you who ask your father for a snake? And he will give you talk more if when you ask for the Holy Ghost. Now, but, now, but Jesus received, what happened was on, in the book of Luke, John was a, John baptized, you know, John came to prepare the way for Jesus. And then John says, I baptize with water unto repentance. But the one who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So now, so in essence, it means that the one who gives the baptism of the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Hallelujah. And Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says, Paul said, be not drunk on wine. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you did not receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. When you were baptized, when you gave your life to Christ and you, you, you hands got laid on you and you received the Holy Ghost, you didn't receive the infilling. The infilling of the Holy Ghost is a continual process. It's something that is daily. It's something that happens all the time. You received him. The measure at which you are able to expand what you receive is the measure at which you are able to manifest certain things. Now, Paul was speaking to the people of Ephesians. These people were believers. They had the Holy Ghost. But he said, be not drunk with wine, wearing his essence, but be filled with the Spirit. Next verse. And then he said, now, how can you be filled of the Holy Ghost? He said, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, sing, singing and making melody in the Lord, in your hearts to the Lord. Next verse. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul expected, Paul is urging believers to be filled of the Holy Ghost. I know you have the Spirit of God, but be filled of the Holy Ghost. It's like a jar of cup. When I pour water into a jar of, of cup, the cup has the water. But what Paul is explaining here is that let there be a continual infilling that even when it is filled it overflows there is something that happens in the life of a believer who is completely filled and possessed of the holy ghost there is something that happens in the life of a minister when the, a minister is completely filled of the holy ghost there is something that happens to a student when a student is completely filled of the holy ghost in different phases of life there is something that will happen to you when you are filled of the holy spirit and i'm here to present to you the fullness of the spirit hallelujah let's see something john chapter 3 verse 34 we see something that god gave jesus with hallelujah 
John chapter 3 verse 34. Now he said, For he whom God had sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. So Jesus had the Holy Ghost without a measure. Jesus had the fullness of the spirit. Jesus had the complete manifestations of the Holy Ghost working in his life. In case you don't know, the gift, the whole gift of the Spirit was functioning in the life of Jesus. Jesus had wisdom. Jesus had word of knowledge, special message. Jesus had interpretation of tongues. Jesus had all the fullness of the, all, all the gifts of the Spirit working in his life because he had the Spirit with that measure. Now when it comes to the seven spirits of God, which is also called the seven manifestations of the Spirit, Jesus had these seven complete manifestations at work in his life. And Jesus was telling us, if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost without measure to do the works he did, and then when he was sending you and I, he said that greater works shall you do, even more than he did. So Jesus expects me to do more works, greater things that he did, than he, that he did. He expects me to do that. So if he expects me to do that, the measure of the Holy Ghost that he used in doing his assignment on earth, I need that full measure. Anything short of that measure, I won't, I, there won't be balance. The seven spirit of God has to be rested in your life. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of, which one did I miss? Understanding. So if you check yourself now, you will see that there might be some certain dimensions of the Holy Ghost that, are, that, that is not at work in your life. For you to be able to do the work that Jesus did on earth, you need it. The spirit with that measure. He said greater things that he did that we will also do also. If I'm going to operate in the gift of healing, I need the fullness of the spirit. I can have, I, I think I shared a testimony one time. I said that I was going to prophesy to somebody and I didn't use wisdom to give the person the message. I told the person, I saw your husband cheating on you. Be careful, your husband will cheat on you. And it brought issues because I didn't apply the gift of wisdom to that word of knowledge I got from the Lord. So you see, it is very important, it's very, it's very efficient that these seven manifestations of the Spirit are at work in your life. Hallelujah. You are able to read the scripture and understand it. I always say these things. I say that the fact that you are around spiritual things does not mean you can see. Spiritual things are things that are spiritually discerned. Spiritual things are not things that secular education will give you. Spiritual things are not things that are discerned carnally. Spiritual things are principles. They are understood, given, governed by the spirit. And the person who will take you into that journey is the Holy Ghost. So I always say this thing that even if a person doesn't go to school, a, a woman who doesn't go to school, a man who doesn't go to school, you can't tell him that because, oh, because you went to school that he will not be able to comprehend scriptures. No. In your schools, what you need to be able to understand, you need the Holy Ghost as well, but you need to study. You, it, might, it might not be spiritual, but you need to study. You need to do certain things, go to school, attend classes. But when it comes to spiritual things, the Bible, the scriptures, you need a spirit to journey into that place with you. So the fact that you are around spiritual things does not, does not mean that you can see. It takes the spirit of understanding to open your eyes and take you into the scriptures. It takes the spirit of wisdom to be able to know how to speak to people. It takes the spirit of knowledge to be able to read the word of God and, you know, assimilate it. It takes the spirit of might to be able to stand up by 3 a.m. to pray. It's not your might. It's not your strength. It takes the spirit of might. It takes the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit that comes upon a man. This was the spirit that was at work in the life of the, the prophet and the people of the Old Testament. They, you always say the spirit came upon them. It always comes upon. It's the spirit of anointing. It's the spirit of dominion. When it comes, something happens. Something extraordinary happens. That's why you say the spirit of the Lord does rest mightily. It rested mightily upon Samson. It's the spirit of dominion. 
If you don't have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, you cannot have reverence for God. Have you seen people in the church? When they are in church, they are chewing, 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 chewing gum. There is no reverence. When the spirit of the Lord enters into a place, there is reverence and holiness for God. When the spirit of counsel is at work in you, you know what to do. You know how to do it and you know where to, anyhow you want to do it, you just know how to do it. Because there is a spirit that gives you wisdom. There is a spirit that gives you advice. There is a spirit that gives you counsel. This is important, not just for ministers of the gospel. It's important for every single person. The complete manifestation of the spirit must be at work in your life. Hallelujah. And Jesus said greater works that he did that we will also do. It means that we also need the spirit without measure. So if I check myself and certain things are not, and that's why when it comes to the infilling of the Holy Ghost, you come there and you die. Me that talk about the Holy Ghost, there are times when, times where I'll just be like, hi, hey, Holy Ghost. But it's a country. See, I said something that if you, if the moment you stop yielding, eh? See, what the Holy Ghost is doing in your life is to bring Jesus to your heart. If you had a weakness before you gave your life to Christ, it's the Holy Ghost that helps you to tame that weakness. And it is done by continual yielding. If you have issues with anger, Holy Ghost, I yield myself to you. The moment you, you stop yielding, yielding is something you do every day. Romans 6, 13 says, yield your members unto righteousness is something that you do every single day i come holy ghost i yield myself to you holy ghost i die to you holy ghost i i give this thing i cannot stop i cannot stop it i cannot know it enough it takes only the holy ghost to know it if you if you stop you to check yourselves if you stop using that weakness of the holy ghost you'll find yourself you'll find that weakness starting to gain grounds again so there is a place for fellowship there is a place for death with the Holy Ghost. If I check myself and a certain dimension of the Holy Ghost is not at work, I need to begin to do something. I need to begin to yield. I read, I read the Bible. I can't comprehend scriptures. I need to begin to call for, I call him for spirit of understanding. You are the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost. It's not, when we talk about the seven spirits of God in the book of Revelations, it's not talking about seven different Holy Ghost. It's talking about one Holy Ghost in seven different manifestations. When you see the golden lamp stand, the Holy Ghost is on earth. So there is something representing the Holy Ghost in the throne room of God. And that is the seven golden lamp stands. When the seven golden lamp stand stands, you see fire burning on top of it. It's called the seven golden lamp stand. It represents the seven spirits of God. And I, I mentioned those seven spirits of God. So you begin to check yourself. What are the things? Holy Ghost, I can't, I'm reading scriptures, but I can't comprehend. You recognize him as the spirit of, as the spirit of understanding. I used to say something that whenever you are reading, the scripture is our life. Whether you like it or not, it's our life. When I'm reading the scriptures, I begin to see myself where they are. I don't know if it happens to you. I begin to see my... There was a time I, I was reading, a, I was reading um, something about Stephen. Before Stephen was stoned to death. I was reading it how Stephen was so amazing. And then someone called me on the phone. If you see the kind of anger. I picked the call. Before, for me to... When I ended the call to come back. It was like I was disconnected. Because I was actually journeying with them. So what the Holy Ghost does is that when you read scriptures and you invite him, there are some, there are, I used to tell that, that when I'm listening to Apostle Aramis' message, I cannot comprehend. I cannot comprehend that, I don't know, maybe it's, it's the, 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 the English or the grammar he uses, or I don't know, but I, I find it difficult to comprehend. So what I begin to do is that, because I believe that he has a certain way he, he preaches, so I begin to tell the Holy Ghost, please, as this man is talking, open my eyes of understanding to hear and understand what he's saying if i if i don't tell the holy ghost look as if i'm just hearing grammar grammar i'm not hearing i'm not comprehending anything but when i begin to tell the holy ghost holy ghost help me understand what this man is saying you are the holy ghost i recognize you as the spirit of understanding help me it begins to open your ears it begins to open your eyes you begin to see scriptures scriptures begin to become alive to you the spirit of the fear of the Lord 
when the spirit of the fear of the Lord is not in a, in a church you see people doing things anyhow the Holy Ghost is quiet the Holy Ghost is holy as his name sounds but it can also be he said the Holy Ghost and his fire you see the Holy Ghost and manifest fire he said he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and baptize you with fire so in as much as he is a quiet gentle spirit still small voice he can when the authoritative voice of the Holy Ghost when you hear it you will you will tremble and you will know God has spoken so when the spirit of the fear of the Lord comes into a gathering there is reverence there is quietness nobody is walking up and down nobody is moving up and down even children will sit down hallelujah the spirit of counsel the spirit of wisdom the spirit of knowledge if, you, if the spirit of knowledge does not is not at work in you you'll be reading the scripture you can't understand quoting scriptures is not by i open scripture and say john 3 16 i will cram it for god so loved the world for god so loved the world that he gave the Lord because of those things that people do when they are in school they'll be crying. Mm -mm, it's not like that though it takes the spirit of knowledge to help you hallelujah hallelujah and that's why i said that to receive the holy ghost is a different thing i've talked about the baptism of the holy ghost i've talked about the infilling of the holy ghost the baptism of the holy ghost come when you accept the holy ghost into your life the infilling of the holy ghost is a journey that will be that that, that will be undergo by you you will take yourself in that journey i'm filled of the holy ghost now but that's not the end i'm filled of, I, I, sorry I, I have the holy ghost in me i speak in tongues my sister that's not the end the things that jesus did are you doing them to heal the sick any man who wants to heal the sick without knowing who the holy ghost is how will you heal what where do you want to start your healing from after jesus was baptized in water after he was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted bible says he came out in the power of the spirit in luke chapter 4 verse i think verse 32 is the the, the, the the scribes and the pharisees say who is this man that speaks with so much authority because he was filled of the holy ghost when you are filled of the holy ghost your words carry power when you are filled of the holy ghost see this infilling of the holy ghost eh, it is it, it comes to a point where where, where you, 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 you bring yourself inside allow the Holy Ghost to come outside that, that way when I talk my words is not just mere words my words carry power hallelujah let's see Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 to 4 there was something Isaiah prophesied about the coming of Jesus Now he said and there shall come now i want to show you something he said there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse remember jesus was a stem that came was was a rod that came out of the, um, the stem of jesse because of his, his seed the seed of david and a branch shall grow out of his roots next verse he said and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him as i was prophesying about jesus he said and the spirit of the lord will rest upon him that's number one the spirit of wisdom number two the spirit of understanding number three the spirit of counsel and might that's five the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the lord those spirits rested upon jesus christ now get me verse i think verse five i want to see what what verse three to five let me see okay now it says and and righteousness shall be ghetto of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins when jesus had a complete manifestation of the holy ghost in him there was something that had to be shown that he was indeed complete in him hallelujah so when you are totally filled of the holy ghost something must bet forth out of you when you are filled of the holy ghost this man who is playing this keyboard when this man is filled of the holy ghost i know you are filled of the holy ghost when he begins to play instruments it's no longer him playing instruments because this is the gathering of the holy ghost the holy ghost is the spirit of the church so when you that's why it's always important we recognize the holy ghost because even your man of god cannot preach without the holy ghost 
Even that prophecy that you are coming to church to hear is by the Holy Ghost. Even that healing you are coming to collect is by the Holy Ghost. So that's why every time we have meetings, we say, let us begin to recognize the presence of the Holy Ghost. And when we recognize His presence, we begin to see Him. We begin to see Him. If you tell the Holy Ghost, take over. If you tell the Holy Ghost, take over. If anybody here tells the Holy Ghost, take over. Do you know how this place will be? It will, be a, it, will, it will literally be the throne room of God. It takes over the hands of the keyboardist. It takes over the hands of the drummer. It takes over the hand of the preacher. It takes over your mind and your understanding. What will happen? It will be a flow in the spirit. It will be a journey in the spirit. Nobody is distracted. Hallelujah. So we need the complete infilling. I have the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost. But nah, there are measure. There are dimensions. You don't tell me that me, that me, that will come every day and die to the Holy Ghost. And you, that you will come once in five days. You tell me that it's the same. No, no. Daddy used to say, the Holy Ghost, people will call the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost does not know them. You are calling me. I don't know you. When last did we have a conversation? When last did we talk? When last did you tell me to take over? When last did, did you tell me that you are, you are going out? Let me, let, come with me and follow me. I don't know you. You just call me for nothing. We are not even friends. There are some people that will make, make boast of names of people. Eh, Ote Dola, David Do, all these people. They are my friends. Do they know you? No. You, you are just making boast of them. Hallelujah. Let's see Revelation chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. I'm still on the, the, the seven spirits of God. Anyway, Revelation chapter 1 verse 4 to 5 talked about the seven golden lampstands. It was sent out to the earth. The seven golden lampstands were sent out to the earth, which means the Holy Ghost was sent out to the earth to fuel the earth, to fuel the believers. Hallelujah. Now, to live a healthy Christian life, there must be a death to self. Let's see Acts chapter 19. I don't know if our um, our media guy is with us so Acts chapter 19 verse 1 Paul asked them of what baptism have you received he said and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples he asked he said he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed Paul did not ask them, are you a born again Christian? Because this was 20 years after, the, after the, the day of Pentecost. So he was asking them that, have you received the Holy Ghost when you believed? Because a man can, be, can believe, a man can be saved but not, not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You can be baptized into Christ but not baptized in the Holy Ghost. The baptism into Christ is the baptism of salvation. You come into Christ, you receive the life of Jesus. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the baptism where you ask the Holy Ghost to come into you. It is still Jesus. It is still Jesus. Because while Jesus walked on earth, he walked in the flesh. So the Holy Ghost inside of me is the indwelling of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said that we've not even known if there ever be anything called the Holy Ghost. And what happened? Paul laid hands on them and they were filled of the Holy Ghost. We are in the, in the dispensation of the Spirit of God. Everybody needs to be filled of the Holy Ghost. If you are going to do the work that Jesus, a lot of people have ministries. A lot of people have assignments. You have different assignments. I don't know what God has called you for. If you don't know the Holy Ghost, you cannot excel. Take it from me. There is no two ways about it. God has given you the license. He has given you the seed. The day of Pentecost was the day the church was born. And on that day the church was born was the day that Jesus planted a seed onto the earth, onto the church. And the seed is the seed of the Spirit of God. And the measure at which you use that seed 
is the measure at which that seed will germinate that's why you cannot get enough we tell him holy ghost another measure holy you, you cannot be drunk on yesterday's wine it's not possible yesterday's wine was enough for yesterday's issue yesterday's grace was sufficient for yesterday's issue you need to come again and collect more you need to come before him holy ghost what is the holy ghost has a word for us every day if you don't collect that word i don't know how that day will start for you i was drunk yesterday i was intoxicated maybe after today some of you will be intoxicated you will now go back and say tomorrow holy ghost and eh, let me use the one that we remain from yesterday it's not possible is new every morning is renewed paul said even though my outward man perishes the inward man is renewed day by day so i come to the presence of the lord and i die i come there was something when we when daddy and i spoke to minister theophilus he said he wrote something on his wall on his um on his room on the wall theophilus have you died today i'm like what he's bringing himself into that consciousness that even if he forgets to die that thing will tell him have you died and he begins to die if the spirit is not if your body is not dead the spirit cannot be alive he said present yourself as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable he said even though the outward man perishes the inward man is renewed so i come before my father and i renew myself good morning holy spirit i yield my day to you see there are certain people that are channeled to provoke you every day. An argument can shun, can, can shun certain things when it comes to the Holy Spirit. There are certain people that devil has projected them to offend you. And when you pick that offense, it changes your entire mood and it changes your day for you. But when you come to they say today i submit myself to the holy ghost holy ghost this my legs will not take me to places i'm not supposed to be i yield my hands to you holy ghost i yield me i used to you I, I like to yield because i'm a thinker i can think oh my god when it comes to thinking i can think not think rubbish oh. i can think i can analyze if you mention one statement i can help you to give you amplified versions of one statement you made so I said, Holy Ghost, I yield my thoughts to you. I don't have strength for unnecessary thinking. I yield my thoughts to you. So he begins to take over. So I will not say because, oh, I yield my thought to him yesterday. Today, I will not yield my thoughts to him. It's a devil. The Bible says that, watch out for your adversary, the devil. For he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking for whom to devour. He is not a lion. He just goes around like a lion. And his pathway, his channel is your mind. So if that mind is not yielded to the Holy Ghost, I don't know what will happen to you. Your mind is not a dumping ground for trash. Your mind is not a place where Aswama come and drop dirty inside. No. You come to a point whereby the only person that see that's why if you don't guard your mind, you won't be able to tell which voice is from God and that of the devil. If your mind is not yielded to the spirit of god you will not be able to tell which voice you are hearing because you are in a in a net in a place where any network can find you but if your mind is always directed to the holy ghost holy ghost has my mind nobody has my mind except the holy ghost the devil cannot come and drop trash the devil won't come and drop certain dustbins inside there because this mind is occupied and that's why a lot of knowledge needs to fill our mind if i ask people now when was the last time you read a Christian book? Maybe I should begin to ask one by one. See, if your mind is empty, there is nothing that the spirit will pick from. Your mind needs to be occupied, not with nonsense, oh, but with things of, the, of God. So if you stay a week without reading the Bible, your spirit has no new fresh things to pick from. But if every day, that's why you see people, they can't distinguish dreams from God and dreams from the devil because they, they are, they, their mind has been occupied by so many things you see some people throughout the maybe they have they, they had activities in the day the activities to come and play in their dream because that was just what they did but if your mind is always occupied either one way or the other 
you are reading Christian books, you are listening to sermons, you are playing playing music, Christian music, you are doing this, you are doing that. Your spirit, remember I said something that the mind is a gateway to the spirit. Whatever the, the, the mind the mind has is what the spirit picks from. Because the soulish realm is a realm on its own. It's a spiritual, it's a spiritual physical. The soulish realm is in between. The spirit picks from the soul and gives it to the body. So if, if whatever that it occupies the soul is not of God, the spirit that is 100% regenerated, regenerated like God, you begin to pick certain nonsense. That's why you see yourself, you'll be doing stupid things in the dream. You say, what happened? There is no regeneration. Sorry. There is no renewing of the mind. And the only person that can help you renew your mind is the Holy Ghost. No man can do it. I was telling, I was having a conversation with a sister on Tuesday, and then she was telling me that she's finding it difficult to pray. I said, Why is it that you people, you, it's like you, you people, you people just like suffer. You people like to just suffer. Me, I will come and suffer when I have the Holy Ghost. I, I don't, I don't have that 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 time. I'm finding it difficult to pray. That is say something here. He said, an attack on your prayer life is a serious attack to render you useless. If you find yourself not praying, there's a demon involved. Because when your prayer life is attacked, you can't do any other thing. So I begin to see that I cannot pray. One day, two days, three days, I cannot pray. And you sit down there and you are struggling to want to. You don't struggle to want to. I recognize the spirit of might. I have a spirit that takes over the weakness of a man. I recognize him as a spirit of mine. Holy Ghost, I know you are the spirit of mine. You are able to give me strength when I'm weak. Holy Ghost, take over. I begin to sit down. From sitting down, the next day I'm standing up. I'm pacing up and down praying. Someone who had no strength to pray before, all of a sudden has strength. How did it happen? There is a journey. Hallelujah. Let's see John chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. It says now, Jesus was saying something. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I want to explain something. He said, I will come to you. Now, Jesus was going. And then he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How is it possible when he was leaving? And then he said, I will come to you. Next verse. He said, yet a little while, and the world seared me no more. Jesus was going. We, wouldn't, we were not going to see the physical Jesus again. But he said, but ye see me, because I live and shall also live also. And now he said, soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me since I live. You also will live. Next verse. Now let, let's get to verse 20. He says, and that day ye shall know that I am in my father. And ye in me and I in you. What does this verse say? The fullness of the Godhead dwells in me. Jesus said, I am in my Father. And I am in Jesus. And Jesus is in me. Which means the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the fullness of the Godhead dwells inside of me. Jesus said, it is expedient that I go. Because if I do not go, the comfort I will not come. Jesus knew the importance of the Holy Ghost. I was saying, Jesus, I don't know what man would have done even if he did not bring the Holy Ghost to us. Because all the work that Jesus did on earth would have been useless. Because somebody needed to be in charge of the work of the kingdom here on earth. If Jesus had died, he paid the price, he paid in full, paid our debt and cleared it all. But if he had gone like that, if he had left us and said, okay, I've died, what you just need to do is that believe in me and you'll be saved, right? Let me be going. If he had done that, we, none of us here will make heaven. Because he said, though we are, we are in this world, we are not of this world. Because the, the things of the world will try to corrupt you. Who will convict you when they try to corrupt you? Jesus is in heaven. Even though he's interceding for us, who will help you? That's why he said, I will send you another comforter. Which means the Holy Ghost is the indwelling of Christ in us. Is Christ indwelling in us it is still Jesus that's why we call him the spirit of the father and the spirit of the son hallelujah 
which means the Holy Ghost is still inside of me. Let's see Luke chapter 1 verse 35. He says, when uh, Mary was to conceive, something happened in this verse. He says that, and the angel answered and said unto her, anytime I'm reading this verse, I should like to read it with power. And he says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy things who shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Is there any verse that talks about being conceived of the Holy Ghost? I want to pick that word, conception. Now what he said is that, he said Mary will be conceived by the Holy Ghost. It is, it is, it is the same thing that the Holy Ghost did in the life of Mary that the Holy Ghost will do in our lives. He says the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the baby will be born. But he said that you shall be conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now that is the same thing that the Holy Ghost wants to do in our life. He wants to conceive Christ in you. He wants to be, he wants to bet something inside of you. When the Holy Ghost came upon Mary, she was, she was conceived, which means the seed of Jesus was not the seed of mere mortal. It was a seed of the spirit because Mary was only an incubator that hosted Jesus in her womb. So the same thing that the Holy Ghost did in the life of Mary, the Holy Ghost wants to do in your life. He wants to conceive Christ. He wants Christ to be better out of your life. He wants to reveal Jesus to you. He wants to make Jesus real to you. He wants you to come to a point whereby all you think and all you know is Jesus. Everything the Holy Ghost does is just to glorify the name of He said that when he comes, he will testify of me. He will bring glory to my name. That's just his assignment. So he comes to you because you are a newly born baby. You are a newly believer. He comes and puts the seed of Christ in you that you might give birth. Hallelujah. So that is what he wants to do. That is just what he wants to do. Which weakness is that? Holy Ghost, take over. And for you to be able to manifest these dimensions of the Spirit, you must know them. You must know them. You must know them. This, this part of the scripture that, that, that talks about being conceived is the spirit of might. Eh? Students, you want to go for an exam. Hey, I used to say this thing. If I knew the Holy Ghost as much as I know him now, I'm telling you 5.00 GPA. 5.00 GPA. Nothing less than that. Because I will just play my part, read my book. I'm not saying you should not read book, oh. I will read my book. Anytime when I was in the school of ministry, anytime I want to write my exam, I lift up my pen up. <laughs> I say, Holy Ghost, this hand ceases to be my hand. Oh, yeah, take over now. I hold the pen and I begin to write. Literally, the Holy Ghost begins to write. There is a koinonia. The Holy Ghost knows his people. He indwells you, but he knows people that he interacts with. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Spirit of God on whom you receive as a seal on the day of redemption. The day you were redeemed, the day you were saved, you were presented the Holy Ghost. Say, grieve him not. Let's see the next verse. I don't want TLB. Just give me King James or New King James. Preferably New King James. Now, the next verse says, let all bitterness. He said, grieve not the Spirit of God. So how can you grieve the Spirit of God? Bitterness grieves the Spirit of God. Rot grieves the Spirit of God. Anger grieves the Spirit of God. Clamor grieves the Spirit Speaking evil things grieves the Spirit of God. Malice there are people that can keep malice. They, their names are malices. Sister Mal, they can keep. I don't know how people do that. I don't know how people keep malice. So, hey, if I if I'm of, if I'm angry with you, I will get angry with you. After that period, that anger dies. Just that I may not allow you to know, but. <laughs> But the anger has died already. I don't have time to keep grudges. 
place that Holy Ghost will occupy in my heart. I'll come and keep you and put there. And you'll be making me restless. There was something that we learned from that um, program. He said that if I see anybody that is not part of my vision, I remove him away. If you be an obstruction to my Christian life, I remove you away. You, someone will stay and be keeping malice. Holy Ghost will be... And there are, there are certain people that don't even know when the Holy Ghost is grieved. Hey, God help me not to come to that point where I will not know when my father is grieved. That, if I come to that point, that means I'm lost forever. I should be able to know. You should be able to know. Hey, I grieve the Spirit of God now. The Holy Ghost is not happy with me now. And certain things, when you begin to think about pleasing the spirit of God you begin to please the father you begin to please the son they are one the fullness of the spirit the fullness of the Godhead they are not apart from each other when them in the Old Testament when Isaiah prophesied get me Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 there's something I want to I want to I, I want to I want to give he said that the Lord spoke to me in the Old Testament they never referred to the Holy Ghost as the Holy Ghost because he had not yet been manifested he had not he said that and one cried unto another and said holy holy is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory now when paul was i don't know in the scripture but i think in acts when paul was making reference to this scripture he said and they and isaiah prophesied cr crying unto the holy ghost so when they talked about the lord in the old testament they were referring to the spirit of god so in the spirit of God, in the, in the New Testament, it would describe to him as the Holy Ghost said. But the people of the Old Testament would say that the Lord said because he is God. Fullness of God. Fullness. Not, not reduced, not, not anything. Fullness of the Godhead. John chapter 7 verse 37. We are about to round up. chapter 7 verse 37 he said in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirsts let him come unto me and drink next verse no give okay yes he said he that believeth in me has the scriptures has said he said out of his bellies shall flow rivers of living waters so when the Holy Ghost is inside of you, it's not a well. A well is too small. A well cannot host enough. It's a river. River will flow. When the Holy Ghost possesses you, when the Holy Ghost indwells you, I say out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let, let us begin to do these things. Let's begin to know these things. Let's begin to activate these things in our lives. The Spirit of the Lord. If you read Isaiah chapter 61, or chapter 60, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon, he comes with anointing. I begin to see, it takes power to preach the gospel, oh. Paul said in Corinthians that I do not preach the word of God in just mere words. I preach them in power and demonstrations of signs and wonders. So it takes the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel. You want to go for evangelism and you leave the Holy Ghost. Wait though, do you think it's just your mouth that convicts men to be saved? M -A -A -C. He said that a tree 
a, a tree will not grow more than its seed or how do I put it a tree cannot grow what, what is not in the seed so you cannot do what is not in your nature men by birth came with the nature of the devil so you cannot you as a person cannot convince a man to give his life to Christ it's not possible there is, there is a compelling spirit and after and that person there is a convicting power you preach the word the Holy Ghost does everything he is the one who he is the one who initiates the person into Christ draws him into Christ to give his life to Christ hallelujah and that person is saved so check yourself the gifts of the spirits you have the gift of healing but your problem is you don't know the Holy Ghost you don't know what happens what transpires in the spirit when you say receive your healing that when I touch you, I say, this hand ceases to be my hand. This is the hand of Jesus. And you begin to see the Holy Ghost executing his power. The gift of prophecy. The gift, anybody who is prophet, who wants to, who wants to prophesy, or who, is, who has a prophetic gift, is not somebody who talks, uh, talks every day, does nonsense. Because when you start engaging in different, different things, different things pollute your mind. So check yourselves. What am I lacking? Where am I failing in my relationship with the Holy Ghost? Pick up yourself and stand again. You're the promise of the Father. You're the spirit to the church. Holy Ghost, the well that never runs dry. Can we be on our feet? You're the fullness of the Godhead, now you're dwelling inside me. Holy Ghost, the life that's always new. You're the promise of the Father, you're the spirit to the church. Holy Ghost, the well that never runs dry. Can you begin to speak in the dialect of the Spirit? Shall you